So let's verify the entire part. Take a look at it. I'm going to turn the stock on. Once again, I'll go to tail. We're going to go by tool. I'm going to play this through. So I have a few collisions in there. Something's up in the middle here. So again, what a nice thing to do inside of the verify is come in and just go straight to the collision and see what we got going on. So it looks like I may be colliding with the holder on the spot drill itself. Well, what I can do in that instance is go ahead and push that spot drill out of the holder and take care of that issue. So I'll come up to my tool library because I want to change all of these all at one time, simple enough to come in and actually select that spot drill and change its out of holder. And all applicable toolpaths get dirtied. We just have to regenerate them. Now we can come in and verify this once again with simulation. And all those red marks are gone. You'll see here we have, uh, like I said, we have a discrepancy with our thread milling. So something has come in and wiped out the majority of that. That would, looks like what that would be is the either the shank of our tool or the contour itself has come in and taken out that geometry. So what we need to do is check and make sure that our circular tool had, this, had the right tool. And it looks like it didn't. I accidentally just rolled right through that and it automatically selected that tool for me. So that wiped out our geometry. No big deal. Let's just select that again. Redo that. Now that was something that wouldn't have been picked up by the Verify because the flutes were actually physically cutting. But what I did see was the part sticking out of that verification. Resimulate, and of course we still have the issue of our threads cutting uh, way too big. We actually aren't putting threads on there. So let's close that. Let's take a look at these two toolpaths on their own. We've got this final contour in our undercut tool as well as the threading that's our, our culprit in this instance. So let's go ahead and simulate just this tool and turn off stock turn on all toolpath and let's just take a look and see what we're running into here okay so this tool is cutting into size there may be a size offset in there let's double click to get into the edit take a look at that no we're good we're going to zero that's the selected contour itself the chain should be the correct geometry so it's coming down to being all circular tool here on the uh, shank or the thread. So let's let's verify this tool real quick and see if this tool is rubbing. And the way we can see that is just by verifying it in simulation, grabbing a point here. And playing it to its extent so we can see it entering and exiting the cut. You'll see the engagement of the tool, and what we can do over here is show transparent. And that's going to show us how much this is engaging into that cut. And it, it looks like it might just be engaging what we want it to, uh, which is the amount to cut into there. So let's go ahead and close this. The only other culprit would be our radius tool. Now this is something we didn't look into, is our radius tool rubbing that. So let's simulate this. and I guarantee that's what's doing it. So it's just barely scraping along, but it is wiping out a, a small portion of that because the flutes are probably defined all the way down that, that side of the shank. It's not picking it up in our verification as a crash. So we will need to change this toolpath and possibly look into another alternative for that radius. So let's go ahead and shorten up this toolpath. Let's see what we can get away with. Now, I want to be able to grab all of this geometry once again. But as you can tell, I don't need to go in and out of this. What I can do is just select this, and we can try and shorten this chain up. So I can get rid of the 
the geometry that I don't want. Now, this is where it comes into play where we might have an issue is by holding select and left clicking I can deselect that geometry but you'll see that I don't have geometry to select here in my view in my view so I am gonna have to come back into this toolpath after going to my model browser going back to my default come back to my cam and then reselect in the geometry so again I'm left clicking on the existing contour selection that brings me back into my selection field that allows me to select more geometry so I'm just going to add that to the chain and we're going to shorten this up by I would say about half the diameter of the tool so that we no longer come in around this edge that may be a bit extreme we'll go ahead and take a look we'll verify this once again simulate and see if where it starts it clears and it does so we're gonna go ahead and keep that toolpath the way it is and we may have to come back with something else and stitch this on or get an okay from the customer and just say look this is gonna be a sharp edge around this where the thread relief is because we can't reach it with this with the type of cutter and we might get away with that or you may actually have to come in and custom grind a tool to do that for now we're gonna go ahead and leave it like that I'm happy with those results I know that I'm going to get the buy off from the customer. Let's take care of our thread milling. So let's select this diameter to measure. It's going to be in metric. So what we can do here is in our measuring tools, we can actually click on this arrow over here and we can display the dual units. This is kind of nice because what we can do is how we have our dual unit conversion. This is 66 millimeters. So we're going to look at our print and find the correct metric size for that and what it ends up actually being is we have material left over on that and this is actually a M62 by 1.5. So now we have our thread designation. Just double check the measurement of, this, of the size of the part. Alright, so I'm going to change the geometry selection on the thread milling. I'm going to use this minor diameter, since that's the minor diameter blend of the actual thread, and I'm going to control the depth by selection. So I'm actually going to go to the, from the whole top or whole bottom, I'm actually going to go by selection. So I'm going to select the bottom of that thread. I'm going to give it minus a pitch or two. For the whole top, I'm actually going to go by selection. I'm going to select that top. And that has changed the thread to the correct diameter. So let's go ahead and simulate this to check it. Let's turn our model off so we can see our threads. There we go. 